This episode brought to you by BRE Promotions. Whether you're just starting out or evolving your brand, BRE Promotions offers you expertly crafted disruptions that'll take you to the next level. BRE Promotions, we make your business shine. Visit us at brepromotions.com to schedule your free consultation. No, Bob Boomy. My name is Justin Rimmel, the host of Mysterious Circumstances and Rev96, and you're listening to Nobo Boomy, hosted by Brian Bowden. Hello, everybody. Welcome tonight to another episode of Nobo Boomy, Nobody But Me with Brian Bowden. You are listening to him right now. I'm the host. It's been craziness where I am. I'm in New York City. Currently, we are under a coronavirus uh, threat in the area. Me specifically, where I actually live, um, very connected to to, uh, the people that have been picked up recently and as having the virus or uh, under quarantine. So it's a little nerve-wracking tonight, and that's going to be part of this show. We have a great, great guest. He's a longtime friend of mine. He's a great guy, Um, and we're going to welcome on in a second. I just want to let everybody know, you can catch... Novo Boomy, as well as Inside the Goblin Universe and our other products, always on Podbean at InsideTheGoblinUniverse.Podbean.com. Please like it, listen, subscribe, share it with the friends. It makes a great holiday gift and a birthday gift. Um, it's free. Share it with everybody. Share it on social media. We offer and I offer uh, some great shows, very entertaining, very interesting, great guests, and um, I'm, I have fun with it as much as uh, possible. Uh, I think there's too much seriousness in this world, and I think a lot of people need to get the sticks out of their ass and lighten up a tad bit. We'd all be doing better. That's why I always crack in jokes here and there. I can be very serious, but I'm going to also crack some jokes. So that's what's going on with that. We're also on um, the Spark Radio Network. You can catch us at sparkradio.net, I believe. Um, check us out there, and just take a listen to us. I think you're you're going to love every moment of it. But... Tonight we're going to get into some a variety of different subjects, and we're going to start in one area, and where it leads down this rabbit hole that we're going to go, hmm. I don't know, but it's a huge effing rabbit hole, and it needs to be discussed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was hoping to have a, a, another buddy on as a co-host, a special guest co-host, my buddy uh, at Proximal Paranormal, Al Santariga, but he uh, works very early in the morning. He is right now between the third dream, so Al... I hope when you hear this, you acknowledge that uh, you want to come on. We'll have another roundtable with our guests because I think uh, you, all three of us, operate uh, really great together. With that being said, um, I'd like to welcome to the program, and you may, it may sound familiar, his voice, but this is a friend of mine. His name is Tigger. Tigger, welcome to Nobody But Me. How are you? Good evening. <laughs> oh, I so wanted to play a certain set of music um for this program uh but i don't want to get that copyright crap going on but what's going on tigger how are you doing oh dude yeah we've been friends what has it been five years now <laughs> yeah five uh, five six years yeah at least at least that yeah i mean yeah, it's, I it's been close your... to five years yeah. or something like that something like that i mean i didn't save your ass in a rice patty in vietnam but um <laughs> but uh you know it's 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 been a great great trip and a great road and great you know uh, i'm i'm thankful for you being in my world you know i do appreciate you um you got a lot of knowledge on you a lot of experience from multiple different uh viewpoints and angles i respect them um and this is what we're going to do so just so our guests know and the people that may not know about tigger can you give us a little bio on you tigger a little bio on me. Well, yes. first off, if you recognize my voice, it's from Swamp Gas, everybody. Black Swamp Radio. Yes. If you remember Black Swamp Radio, if you cared about Black Swamp Radio or whatever the hell. All right. Uh, well, a bio. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, uh, I, I've... I know you a couple couple of different uh, versions of you, but apparently the one I was going to use tonight, um, Arizona Tramp, 
apparently something happened to Arizona Tramp. Oh yeah, Arizona Tramp. I killed him off. He 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 died. He he uh, got eaten up by a pack of angry turtles in the pond across the street <laughs> from the house. Well, uh, where do we send the condolence cards? <laughs> 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 but uh, so Tigger Tigger has been around for a while. Um, not normally oh, used yeah. or known uh, for me I, on my part. Well, I, I've had the nickname for. 30, 40 plus years. And uh, Tigger's bounce. I've been through a lot. And uh, that's why I got the nickname. It's real life nickname is Tigger. So yeah, Tigger's bounce. And, I, you know, I mean, I've gone from, I've bounced out of situations like uh, a child dying of mine back way back when and other things like that and so anyway uh <clears throat> yeah it's you know um i know you, you your life experience is vast um not always, oh yeah not always good and three, um, near, three near death experiences there you go there's another reason well, the night's young, so we can make it work. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, by the time people hear this, we can both be dead um, at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you never know. Um, I get that lucky. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about me, fool. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it was me. Try the veal. Um, that, <laughs> that being said, um, one of the things I loved about you as a person, a human being, and as a friend is that you have so much information and knowledge. And yes, uh, between you, me, Al, and our friend Cindy, I mean, we all have our own opinions and takes on things. Um, some people are very adamant about, no, mine is the right one, you're wrong. Um, I like to consider everybody's opinion and devise my own, even if even if I'm told by you I'm wrong, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're stupid, no, that's bullshit, you know, whatever. I still stick a little bit to my guns. Um, but, you know, you come up with these logical reasons and explanations why. Um, sometimes it's, it's like pulling teeth and I apologize to you. But, you know, what? sometimes when you think one way, you need a little bit more proof. And I know that pisses you off <laughs> with certain people how to explain it. Um, but that being said... Let's talk about this whole coronavirus that's going on right now. That's that's. I know. I know. It's you know. It, it's it's on the. It's on a lot of people's minds globally. Um, the way I have the information, and I don't know if it's exactly true because you know, in this day and age of fake news, um, things kind of like evolve and change a lot. But there's a there's a story that this virus was in Canada. And it was under lock and key. And somehow it was given to a third party who took it from Canada to Wuhan in China, where they, of course, do their own engineering of bio, biogenetics and what have you in China. And the purpose of it being there and the purpose that it was released purposely by the Chinese government was to combat all the uprising that's been taking place over Hong Kong, Taiwan. It's also noted that a lot of the people that are affected by this virus seem to be of Asian descent in specific regions, as well as Japanese descent, you know, in their Japanese-Chinese uh, descent, that happens to target a lot more males than females, and it kind of made a little bit of sense. But knowing about viruses, you know, when it gets to the wild, I think this thing got out of control, and of course, you know, you got like a couple billion people in China, it can just start becoming a demon of its own. What's your take of this? What's going on with this thing? Well, you've got 1.5 billion people. But here's a newsflash for you. Uh, the numbers in China are starting to drop from the people that are being sick. Everybody's starting to wear, the virus is starting to wear off in China. And it's spread throughout the world. And it, I don't know, it's the first time I've ever heard what you just said. Really? I, nev I never heard anything about that, but then I don't listen to the radio anymore. Right. I don't listen to conspiracy theories anymore. When I, I, I'm in the occult, as you know, and I talk to my spirit guides and, and, or whatever else on the other side. And the first thing I'm going to say is the goddess tells me that 
something major will happen in 2022. She has been telling me that this now since before I knew you, and I told you five years ago, the goddess told me 2022 when there was some kind of crap going on and, and you were talk- we were talking about right. the end of the world bullshit. So um, I think what uh, is is going on here is the fact that the coronavirus only kills very young or it only kills old people who have pre-existing conditions like heart problems and so on. I mean, when you think about it, the flu, there's 40 million people in this country who have had the flu this season. There is 16,000 deaths from the flu, but they're throwing this big old shit dig about <laughs> how there's a hundred people who have died from the coronavirus. Right. Well, it's easier to catch the coronavirus than it is the flu. It's easier. Yeah, no, it's you, way easier to, yep. but you know what? Keep yourself clean. Keep your uh, hands washed. Take your Lysol wipes and clean off your steering wheel. Clean your phone. Keep your kitchen clean and you'll be fine. Yeah, no. Spray I, Lysol through the house. You'll be fine. Yeah. I was, I, was, I was telling one of my friends today, maybe you should start huffing Lysol. Lysol. And the biggest thing, <laughs> stay home. Yeah, Don't no. go to Walmart because there's all kinds of sick idiots in Walmart. <laughs> there's always all kinds of sick idiots in Walmart. <laughs> Whether we're a virus or not. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, you know, it's common sense. People need to use common sense. Um, the other thing about this coronavirus is that the media has played a big role in using scare tactics. And the stock market has been crashing and then lifting up a little bit and, and dropping and, and, and so on. Not crashing, but dropping. What, uh, but what I'm thinking, what makes sense, this is just my opinion. But what I'm thinking is that, okay, well, they're going to use this as the excuse to actually crash the stock market so that we can have a cashless society. And they're doing this globally. Well, you know, makes that, sense to me. Right. You know, that's a great point. And I didn't even think of it that way because the way I was thinking a little bit more so, given the current politics that's taking place, we're talking about the United States primarily. Um, these are so many, so many people, and I'm going to call them the powers that be, that do not like Donald Trump and his, his freewheeling ability to do what he's been doing, even under such duress and stress. They want him out. They want him out of the game because he's not controllable. Um, this and isn't I, about Donald Trump. No, this no, is I'm, a global thing. Right, right. No, but I'm, the reason why, you know, this is a great thing. If you, if you, fight, if you crash the markets, if you create such a financial turmoil, they blame it on, of course, whoever is in charge, which would be the, you know, if it wasn't Trump and well, this happened during Obama, they'd blame Obama um, or vice versa. But the whole thing is once you crash the markets, then you can rebuild the way you want to rebuild it for what you want and if that's cashless society then that's a cashless society well think think about this too okay most of our vaccines most of our penicillin blah 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 guess where it's made it's made in china and if we don't have access to it then the price skyrockets you got to follow the money i keep saying this over and over and over follow the money if it doesn't work and make somebody somewhere some money they're going to kill it real fast you know and it's very interesting when you talk about the money and and talk about china one of the strangest things that they've been doing but if you well think about it they've been burning currency left and right because this this virus seems to last longer or live longer uh out in the open than most viruses do uh, most of them, cold flu, you give it like 24 hours, 48, whatever, UV light is going to kill it no matter where you are, no matter how cold well, it is. They're making a big deal about how this coronavirus is just supposed to be contact to contact. But newsflash, coronavirus can be airborne. I mean, coronavirus has been as, around as long as the flu. If you look at the back of the Lysol spray can, the right one, not the, the scented get rid of the stink smell in your house Lysol, but the true Lysol disinfectant, it says right on the back of the can that it kills coronavirus. Yes, I actually have that in my hands right now. 
and um, it's yeah, it's all over it um, on the coronavirus. I mean, I've been spraying this. I, I'm going to give you a little tip of the day, power tip of the day. If you can find your um, hand sanitizer, people, um, and you put them in the little jars, I like to spray a little bit of Lysol in there, mix it up, make a nice, really disinfecting cocktail. Take it with you. Put it on your hands. You have to be careful with that, Mr. (laughs) Brian, because Lysol is toxic. You know what? That's why you (laughs) spray it on your kitchen counter and let it dry before you put your hands on it. Right. But, you know, death is more toxic. No, Lysol is toxic and it can fuck you up. Yeah, you well, have to do use Lysol the appropriate way, or it's gonna fuck you up. There's nothing in this world that's not gonna fuck you up because that's <laughs> just the way that it is. And yeah, I, okay, I said the forbidden word, but you know, I, I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, you know what? We're we're not under any of those guidelines, and so I won't be. Uh, you know, maybe I won't be YouTubing it, or maybe I'll just have to put a a uh, a caption in there like uh, "not suitable for people under." Uh, uh, 18 or snowflakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that being said, um, yeah, you know what? I'm just, I'm just thinking. There goes my audience. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. Um, you know, like I've been telling everybody, everybody's freaking out by me, and all these parents are freaking out. And I just pretty much told them, wash with soap and water. Don't touch your face. You'll be fine. You don't need to hug people. <laughs> you know, this isn't this isn't a Godfather movie where you have to give everybody hugs and kisses. You know, Stay you home. You won't have people cough on you. Well, yeah, you know, and and I, th- I mean, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, like t- talk about Super Tuesday. Um, this is taking place after Super Tuesday, which was an absolute joke. By the way, I got to throw this in there. Bloomberg yeah. spends five hundred million dollars on a campaign to win American Samoa when he could have just purchased American Samoa for a hundred million. What a schmuck. That uh, being said, <laughs> I mean, you could have bought it outright for $100 million. All, of the, all Bloomberg did was sink millions of dollars into the Democratic Party. <laughs> yep. That's all he was supposed to do. Nobody in their fucking right mind is going to vote for Bloomberg. I would vote for Clinton, Hillary Clinton, yep. before I voted for Bloomberg. And everybody else feels the same way. So... That being said, that well, that you being know, the <laughs> comment I just made about him just right. boosting the Democratic Party was what it is real. Well, you know, what I was going to say, what I was suggesting is this virus is designed, and and this is your best option is to uh, call social isolation right now. Isolate yourself socially, where you can hang out, but just don't get too close to people. Stay home is better than going out, and that means don't vote. Um, don't go out and vote for anybody. Um, stay the hell away from the polls. You don't know who's going to be in there in that crowded little room. So I don't, you know, part of this is, of course, a natural progression with the virus. Um, this would happen also with the flu. But maybe, you know, it was preordained or designed this way. They always talk you about powers that be. People, you can't tell people not to go vote. What the no, fuck's no, wrong with you? No, I'm not going to tell people not to go vote, but you if, just you, did. if you no, but if you want to manipulate an election, you tell them, listen, for your safety, just stay home. Don't worry about Super Tuesday. Stay home. You want to be safe and secure, and you prey on the fear factor, and that will just naturally take its place about people not going out and voting. I'm not saying not to vote. I think as as a citizen of this United States of America, and um, or, or anybody who's here illegally and now has a driver license uh, you should go out and vote um we need you to vote because it's that important what's going on right now even though they have a whole bunch of rejects that are running um you know you may have the village idiots all there but we need to pick the better village village idiot to be in in the leader seat um so yeah go out and vote i'm not i'm not saying not to vote to vote i'm just saying that maybe some of the powers that be designed as purposely to stop people from voting, to manipulate um, the the future election or what have you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to grab. You know, grasp for straws here. Um, I, I, it's it's just very interesting what's taking place and when it's taking place. Uh, I deal with a ton of idiots as you know, online with a lot of people. And I'm just, I sit there with my jaw down, like, I can't believe at one point I respected a lot of people. And then now I just like, oh my God, 
Well, uh, yeah, I, I've been there. I've done know, that. I, uh, I closed my radio station because of that. <laughs> yes, you did. And um, I am from. I am one of many who are not happy about that. Um, I, I, we're doing this on a Wednesday night, folks, at the right time where we should be hearing Dead in Five and hearing about a dark uh, dwelling, you know, on a swamp, uh, you know, with crack whores and tweakers. Um, <laughs> and and you know what you I, I, I that all up didn't you? oh okay. I totally screwed that up big time I mean I'd ask you to do it but Arizona's dead so I don't know if Tigger can pick it up but that's from a <laughs> dark basement in a haunted dwelling somewhere in the black swamps of Northwest Ohio <laughs> this is Swampcast yes see that's the whole thing it was you know I love Brian Anderson but he just couldn't get that down the right way it was too Brian Anderson it was too like now. Nah, now, it was too Brian Anderson. Yeah. yeah, it was just too too good, too nice. You need I love Brian more. Anderson. He he oh, does. God. Too, but yeah, I mean, he's one of the he, greatest guys out there. I mean. Have my attitude that um, yes, it's one of my best qualities. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, well, Mr. Attitude. So um, let's get off this virus because I just I, I'm starting to scratch and I don't want to talk I'm, about it anymore. I'm, I'm Wash your faces, it. people. Don't kiss or lick. Stop and licking. Yeah. Stop licking ass and stop licking the guardrails, okay? Um, cover your mouth if you want or just stuff it with some stuff. But, you know, for Christ's sake, just clean yourselves up. I mean, half the, half the, if not 90% of those little uh, touch panels over in those McDonald's now has fecal matter on it. That, that's someplace I don't want to shop or eat. That being said, talking about, let's, let's switch over because we always had these conversations about, um, you've had a couple of shows where you talk about future or predictions or what's going on. Um, one of the things I want to touch on is energy right now, because we're we're at a really weird, funky spot. We got a lot of people screaming about we need green energy and it's going to save the planet. And I don't want to get into the whole planet thing. I'm going to st- I'll just say it straight up. If you took a geology 101 class in college, you will know that what's taking place happens every 26,000 to 27,000 years. It's called an Earth cycle, okay? The poles shift, magnetic north shifts. um, There's a ton of stuff that goes uh, wacky and crazy, okay? And what's taking place now is exactly what happens. I am not denying that uh, us adding plastic to the waters and a shitload of radiation from Fukushima is not helping everything out. But, we, you know, listening to a, an autistic child who should be in school, how dare you take her out, um, who are parents that have more anarchist type of attitude and alignment dictating to you what you should and shouldn't be doing, you need to wake up. Okay? Um, I think our personally for power, uh, our best source is nuclear, but we're not going to get in that. We have too many crazy people in the world. What do you think about energy, free energy, what Tess was talking, 369? Let's get the lowdown. I know you were, you, were, you, you, we, you were building or talking about building some kind of machinery. Let's talk about that. What's well, going on with that? There, there's, there's a subject for you, and I can say this, and anybody who understands electronics understands the way that things work will know that i'm talking the real deal and that it's right <clears throat> we have ships that go to pluto and pass pluto well how do you think they do that because they don't have the fuel in them the, these things are about the size of a uh, of a v- minivan or, or something like that, a little bit bigger than a minivan. They don't have the fuel. They're ion dro- driven. And they use what's called a thermal electric generator in, inside these, these spacecraft. This is common knowledge. If you look it up, you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> a thermal electric generator, how it works is that you have a heat source and you have your little generator pieces in between this heat source and this cold source. Well, in space, you've got 250 degrees below zero on the outside of the craft. There's your cold source. On the inside of the craft, you've got a golf ball piece of uranium or something to that effect. 
There's your heat source and there's your power supply for the spacecraft. That is as close to plus one as you're going to get in this galaxy. Period. Are you there, Brian? I'm there, but what's uh, go, okay. go into plus one. Plus one. Explain is, it, please. Plus one energy is, is supposed to be so that it just runs forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Well, guess right. what? Nothing does. The sun will die at some point. Right. Nothing runs forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, except for source or whatever you want to dictate as, as your source. Uh, that's the only thing that runs forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> so you're saying, okay, let's, let's recap quickly. Uh, cold, cold, cold environment, hot environment, uh, some kind of a uh, block of, of energy source, like a plutonium or right. Well, in, in these craft, they use a piece of plutonium and that's where they get their heat source from. Right. And that's that heats up and right? they can also convert that to, to other power. But they've got their, they have, this produces enough energy to, to power the ion drive to gotcha. get something out past Pluto. This is NASA. Where yep. do you think NASA got this from? Na well, that's debatable where NASA got this <laughs> well, from. Well, where do they get it I don't want to go there yet. I don't <laughs> want to go there. We're not going to go there yet? Not yet. Well, not yet. Sure We're not wasn't Amazon. <laughs> it wasn't Amazon. But NASA, NASA developed this. Now, if every single house had this, then there wouldn't be any pollution. Yeah. You don't have to use any nuclear product to do this. All you need is a cast iron or, or, or a steel stove, wood stove. Right. Or a coal stove. Okay. And you need something to create cold on the outside because half the time or, or if you're in the south all the time it's hot outside so you, so you want something to create the cold which oh well um you can use a, a unit from a freezer of a refrigerator like cfc or to, something like that uh it, or not to, well, whatever they the, the, it's not freon anymore it's yeah i think it's cfc and you can you can also use the, the heating element you can get that stove wood stove uh with a heating element from a stove a regular house stove, electric. Right. right. Use the electric, and, and you get that'll go up to 500 degrees. That's, yeah, that's pretty damn good. There you go. There's your two variables. Now all you have to do is, and I'm not going to tell you how to do it online, uh, on the air. I'm not going to do that because I'll have people knocking. We can go there too, but I will have people knocking down my door here tomorrow if I do. You know what? Let's just sell this product already. Come on. We'll put it on Amazon. You and I will go 50-50. But this... You, you, if you know what you're doing, you can make something that will power your home, your pole barn, your whatever the hell else that you have. And it will run for as long as the products don't wear out. Okay. And then you have to replace them. And that's, the, but that, or, that's the truth. That's, the, you no, can no. look it up and find all this out online if you have the gumption. Now, the way to die is science. The way today is science. Society is. Right. Trains they want coming. You to, they want everybody. Yeah, there's my train. There it is. They want everybody to do it for you and give it to them. Well, well I'm not going to do that. Right. No, no, I don't blame you. I, I mean, I think people, there's a lot more satisfaction when you figure it out yourself and you and you just take some information and do the research and then you get to that, you know, the, the payday, let's, let's say, the money shot. Um, you know, the problem with this is uh, I build, a, I build a, a free energy type of device similar to this, which is all legal equipment. You can buy it every place legally. I hook it up to my, my home. Um, one, first and foremost, my meter is going to just drop dramatically like as if it's dead. So it's going to call out probably the local agency, which would be Con Ed by me, Con Edison. Um, and they're going to see if the meter's not running. And then they're going to go inspect a little bit further, like, well, what the hell? How are they getting energy? And if they see this box, then they're going to be like, nope, they're stealing electricity or they'll make up some shit. And the next well, thing you know, you've got people at your door. Ish, when you when you make something like this. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> You uh, don't never have any power running to this place in the first place for Edison to have anything to do with it. Well, like, you got to hook it up to you see. You got to hook it up to the main power line, though, right? Oh, you don't. You just stick it in your pole barn, and it, well, the trick is is to get it turned on. 
And right. I'm not going to tell you how to do that online either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> On air, I'm sorry. But for and, 1995, but, you can buy the course where he will tell you how to. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, no, sure. no, the, the whole, the whole point of a million dollars. <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you get this energy and you, you got to collect it someplace. But the catch 22, Brian, what I was going to tell you is yeah. that if you got this and you hooked it up to your house and then you call the electric company and says, I need to know what I need to do to be able to send you power back through the lines that I'm not using and I've got too much for me to use. Right. You're going to come out and look at this and the men in black are going to knock on your door <laughs> and they're going to take it from you. <coughs> Been there, done that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that more than once. Yeah, it's it's you know there's something special when you get the the knock on the door on that day, uh, depending if you're answered or not. Uh, hopefully, you send the beasts out to answer that door. No, they'll just walk around. They'll, they'll just fucking start walking around the yard and they'll find you. Right, right. And, and and that's the problem. I mean, like you know, pat on your back. You mean while you're sitting at the fire pit and going, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, excuse me, yeah. sir. <laughs> excuse me. We're from the Son blah blah blah, and we need you to shut this down. Um, the problem is, like, you know, you have... They, that. They, pay, they take it. <laughs> they take it. They just take it from you. They um, it. Well, you know, it's really weird because when you have solar energy, technically, those your whole roof is a solar panel. I mean, you can gener- generate a decent amount of energy to combat or sell back. Um, but this is... We're talking about something, a device like this would generate uh, probably hundreds of times more than what a solar panels would do. Well, that depends on how well you make it and, and how you do it and blah, 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 blah. You could make a unit to power Chrysler if you had a big right. enough. Well, I think we should test it out at Al's house. Right. <laughs> You're talking about several thousand of dollars to build this unit, and, and nobody's going to do that when they've never seen it work. They're going to want to spend a minimal amount of money to do it, and if you weasel your way around with it, you can only spend a you, you can get away with spending a couple hundred bucks. Well, what, well, what about like like what Tesla was saying that the energy is everywhere, and you energy and you is can, everywhere, right? And you can pull you can it out of thin air. Of, you can pull the energy out of thin air. People have proven this. You can pull right. it out of the ground and out of thin air. The problem with that is that it's a minute amount of energy that you're pulling out of the air and you have no way to amplify that energy. You, now, there's there's certain things that you can do to amplify the energy and go from a half volt to three volts, but that's about it. Well, what about, you know, when Tesla was uh, on Long Island and a couple other places, he's building those giant Tesla coils and weren't those supposed to be designed to pull the energy in, amplify it, and shoot it back out into the um, the atmosphere or, or around the, the, the planet, if I'm correct? What I'm at, but if you've ever seen what uh, a Tesla coil does, the, the energy goes wherever the fuck it decides that it wants to go when it wants to do it. Right, but but in, 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 in that case... direct that energy in a straight line anywhere. Yeah, I mean, but you, you, in that case, you'd want to pull it, um, you know, you, you can probably focus it or figure out a way, you probably figured out a way to focus the energy beams, and then you focus it to certain areas and just leave your cell phone there, and boom, it's charged. Leave your car there, or, well, I, I use... Energy doesn't work that way, and the reason energy doesn't work that way, traveling through the air, is because of all the magnetics going on, and because of you've got these little bitty pockets of, of, of water in the air and power will go immediately towards the water, the water. It will go towards another energy source. It's going to jump all over. you got there is absolutely no way to keep it from doing that. And, and the proof is, well, I don't need to prove it. Everybody knows what. Right. A short looks like before a, a power line blows. Energy's all over the place. Right. I mean, I, I would be pretty scary for like Grandpa to come out with the heart part, you know, the pacemaker, you know, come over to the house. Uh, you know, they used to give him, you know, people who have pacemakers. Uh, they still probably do with microwaves, um, where it could kind of short out your pacemaker. 
Um, I could just imagine having, you know, this free-flowing energy coming all over the place like a Tesla coil and just shocking the hell out of people when they come by. Well, well, there's the other issue with the Tesla coil. You could have 26,000 volts coming out of a Tesla coil, but it has no amperage. Right. And if it has no amperage, it means it has no ass to make anything work. <laughs> I'm always remembering that one scene in, um, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Midnight Run, or, or um, it's the one with Billy Crystal and uh, Greg, uh, I forgot his last name, the dancer, and they were undercover cops. And <laughs> they said, it's not, the, it's not the volts to get you, it's the amps. The amps. The will amps kill you. are the takes, ones that will. It takes less than a half of an amp to kill you. Yes, or a really bad marriage. Um, that being said, <laughs> <laughs> or both, or both. Um, sometimes kids. Um, but you know, the, one of the things about the the energy devices and the free energy. You know, you you and I've had you've had a ton of great guests on your on your program in the past when you were alive. Um, and you know, we're always talking about these people. I always talk about like these um, uh, this this. I hate the term galactic federation. Uh, you know, that is here to help us and provide us with free energy and, and save the planet and the world. And I've always called this your favorite line, bullshit on it, because I don't think there's any of these guys, you know, sitting at a table, guys, girls, it's or them, saying, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, give the Martians a couple of weapons and let's try to help the Americans, you know, the, 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 the earthlings out by, uh, you know, cleaning up their, their messes. I don't see that they're 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 doing this. Is there a future in free energy? Do you see that coming down the line? I mean, we're talking about these little devices. Do you see us I eventually see it doing happening. that? I see it happening, but only after shit hits the fan and they have to start over. So so let's go let's go back for a second there. So you're talking to your goddess. And Goddess mentions 2022. That's what you just said. Um, big event. Big problem. Is that the catalyst that promotes, like, where Earth is just obliterated in a way where we have to all start over? And something like this would pr- promote the uh, free use of energy or people like our, like, I'm talking about grid infrastructure totally destroyed. So now people are whipping these things up. And now we're, we're, it's just an accepted practice. Okay. When something happens that, oh, I don't know, let's just completely go off the wall here and say all the satellites drop out of the sky. Ooh, it's going to hurt. Uh, oh, that would hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the, the, the kids wouldn't know what to do because they don't oh have God. a cell phone to play with anymore. <laughs> Let me interject but, but for two seconds. The whole second. point <laughs> is, is that... You know, things are past the point of being able to be repaired, you know, because all the satellites dropped out of the sky. So that means nothing works. That means there is no currency available. That means there is no communications. That means blah, 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 blah. That means things fall into different pockets. Society falls into their own different pockets of to survive and so they live that way. Well, we need power, but we don't have power because all this crap happened. So um, they don't have anybody anymore telling them they can't do this. And you get a few people like me running around going to these different spots and saying, okay, well, let's do this. That's basically how that's going to change. Okay. And and is maybe not. It's that's just a scenario. I'm not right. saying any okay. of that shit's going to happen. Okay. No. 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 That I was. I. I. I didn't. I wasn't going to imply that it was going to happen. I'm saying you. You, know, you mentioned 2022 as being a, a big catalyst, destruction, or big event. I'm saying um, 2022 is a big event. She didn't tell me what. Right. She said, because uh, I asked her, you know, when the coronavirus stuff started, because it was starting to look to me like, oh, well, you know, maybe. So I asked her again. Right. She said, I told you 2022. 
<laughs> and that's all she said. Yeah, now go to your room. 2022. Uh, basically, yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, quit hey. fucking bothering me about this. You know. So if everybody's listening right now, we just started 2020. So you got about a little bit close to two years to get your shit together, get your act together. Really start. I mean, I, I've always said this to a ton of people. If you really want to prepare for the future, it's not only about the, mon- the money that you want to, oh, good investments. You want to remember, you want to start learn- reading about how, how to garden how to take care of and be self-sufficient um, in the event we lose all this infrastructure. Well, it's common sense, basically. Okay, oh. depending <laughs> on what part of the country, for example, that right. you live in. All right, you need to have a to-go bag. If there's an earthquake, big enough earthquake, you need to have a to- to-go bag so that you can survive for a few days till you can get help or a hurricane or a tornado or whatever. And they can't, the government can't even convince people that they need to do that. Well, you know, you, the, the problem we have, and I'm going to state it, is we have a lot of people in the world today because they watch YouTube or they went to a university, and they think they, they're, they're God's gift to the planet. They know everything. Well, and the, they, they don't. They watch YouTube. They watch YouTube, and some guy shows them how to distill water, so they think they know how to do it. Right. And it's like, I'm sorry, but you need to have, like, I've got my swimming pool, and I've got the pond across the street. Well, okay, those, there's two water sources, but I can't drink either one. Right. So I need to get something to distill that water or filter that water or both. And I need to have those because if the power goes out and I don't have any water because, well, remember, uh, what was it, 15 years ago now when, when there was that blackout? The blackout, yeah. 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 That great big old blackout, man. Yeah. No, I, I remember it because I walked from... Um where I live, well, I walked from where I worked in Manhattan I was up, all the I was way back up, home, and it was I was sucked. up in Canada when that happened, and we didn't even have fucking running water for a day and a half. Wow. You know, it, I, I was, I, I'm going to take it from a New York perspective. I was very pleasantly shocked that people reacted to the way they did during that blackout. Um, I was thinking a little bit more of civil unrest, but everybody was very helpful to each other. But then again, that's 15 years ago. In the, today's society, no, I, I no, just see people was, walking over that, everybody. Well, like where I'm at now, I guess uh, uh, the Toledo, Ohio area, uh, it lasted for a day and a half. Out by Cleveland, it lasted right. like a day. And up uh, in Canada, it was three days. Nobody ran out of food. Nope. Okay, when people start running out of food and other stuff, that's when things will happen. Oh, yeah. No, no, that, that's a given. And, and um, I was discussing with my missus because of what's been taking place. I said, you know, maybe we should start considering, you know, I have, cert- I have, I have certain bags ready to go. I have t- two big, big bags that last for well over uh, 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 two weeks um, per person. Um, I pick them up they have the water in it and food and what have you um but i said you know maybe we should start collecting some stuff and and her response was where are we going to put it (laughs) and that pissed me off i'm like you're not thinking clearly it doesn't matter where you put it and what you're worried about where where it's going to go what it looks like it matters that we have it in the event we need it um i always highly recommend people go out and get those life straws at least at well, least with those, you can kind of sip some of that water and it's filtering it. I, I teach the granddaughter how to do stuff. Like, I bought one because I didn't have one and I needed one. You know, one of those little magnesium scraper thingies with the, yep. the flint on it. So you can, and, and I taught her, and she did it. I didn't do it. She did it. Uh, I taught her how to make a fire with that. You know, you, you need to be able to make a fire and control it. Yep. You need to have a food source, you need to have water, and you need to have shelter. Well, I've got all that here where I'm at. Even if I right. don't even if I wasn't to go anywhere and buy anything to prepare for it, I still have it. But I've got the common sense well, it's not common sense, but um, I've got the wisdom to know how to do it. Because I took the time out and actually learned how to do it. And that's right. all I'm saying to everybody else is that they need to know how to do it. So if the, if the time comes, they know how to do it. 
and they they're not dependent. You don't. It's the worst thing in the world in a situation like that is to be dependent on somebody else. Yep. You never want to be dependent on somebody else for anything during that time. Well, you know, it's it's where you live compared to where I live. It, it it's it's a lot different. I mean, you you have a little oh, more yeah. rural environment. I'm in I'm in a major city. Oh and, yeah. And you know what? Um, I I've always. I, before the blackout, I always thought, what would happen if, if X, Y, and Z happened? How would I play it out? The biggest thing is to pretty much get out of the city, um, if you can. Um, because you want to get out before the food goes, uh, just to give yourself a little bit more, you know, a head, a head start, a jump start. You want to be able to access some kind of uh, tools, including weapons, for protection, survival, and food source in hunting. Um, this is a big problem. A lot of these, a lot of people, I mean, I, I've heard tons of people say the same thing we're saying right now, you know, learn this stuff, get this down. But it, it, you know, it seems to fall on deaf ears because everybody thinks it's like that, oh, we can't fail mentality and the banks failed, you know, and they learned quickly. Yeah, everybody can fail. So I, I'm always telling people, you really should start preparing for the event that if something does happen, you're quarantined or you've got to get the hell out of Dodge. You know how to take care of yourself. And, you know, all I get from people is these stupid looks like, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist or he's crazy or whatever. It's not crazy. It's, it's being prepared. It's just as being prepared as if you had life insurance policy. This is your life insurance policy. That's, that's you know, where I wanted to go with that. But I, I, you know, I tell you what the worst thing in the world is, is having your child or grandchild look up at you, dependent on you, and you can't do anything because you were too put off and you didn't have didn't want to bother doing shit or something. And you have a little child looking up at you that has no other choice but to look at you for for everything. And you can't do a thing. You can't help them because you can't help yourself. Yep. And but we, you know, that that's the problem with the cities. There's a lot of people that are like that. They can't help themselves. Um, you know, I mean, I, I know that if I got out of the city, first of all, I don't have a place to go to. I know that for a fact. Um, I don't have like a, a like a cabin in the woods where I can just run up to or whatever. And you know, don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect anybody wanting me to come by their house at that point too because you know what, they've got enough for their family, not for me. Um, so, it, it, you know, even your best buddies and even family members will, will turn on you if putting in that situation. So I think it's, it's if you can just be able to learn how to survive. I think you want, instead of going to a movie for the weekend, go go. There's tons of these courses where they'll teach you how to survive, even in a city. Take a course um, or I'm going to tell you right now, Tigger, you need to write a damn book and put it out there and say what you need to be prepared no, um, I don't need to do that. There's yeah. enough of those books out there. I don't need to do that. Oh, come on. We want to sell something tonight. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, okay. Well, we can sell a ballet can class just, if you want. I mean, come you can just send my ass some money. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, we're going to do that, too. Just, just for the hell of it. <laughs> we can do that, too. So, uh, if you send me money, I won't talk anymore. No, no, no. He'll talk. Trust me. <laughs> it, it, you know what? It, it's missed. And I've always said this, and I said it to Alan, I said it to other people, I said you know, you you need to be on the air. You need to. And I know there's a lot of underlying issues and all this other stuff. But there's a lot, a lot as was lost when when Black Swamp, Swamp Radio just, like, you know, stopped. Um, a, lot of, a lot got lost. And, and it was not for the better for anybody. It was a lot for the worse. Um, and I always, you know, I, if I ever get enough, to, you know, dinero together to get you a damn computer, the one that would work and, and stuff, I would love to have you back on because I have a computer. I just haven't bothered replacing the hard drives that one. Yeah. You know what? But I mean, and I it's know right it's an arduous, you know, it, it's, it's a, a thankless task to do what you have used to do, um, uh, and put out there all the time. I mean, you, it was, it was just fantastic, but. Uh, that's my two two cents going out at you saying you know how much you miss and that that's the truth. Um, Al and I talk about it all the time. Like it's Wednesday, we want to <laughs> we want to hear Dead and Five. You know, we want you to be coming on with with your guest. I mean, you introduced me to Paul Sinclair um, and a lot of other guests that were just out of this world. You had them well before everybody else, and. 
these are these are PTP uh, primetime players, and you know a lot of these people don't have it. Jim Mallard has a lot of great guests, but he doesn't have what you had. Um, there's a couple other people who have some good guests, but you know you have this way about you. I really wish you would come back on, and maybe before 2022, before the world goes poof. I, I used to read a lot of those. Uh uh, comments from um, my shows that would play on that one YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, and they, uh, a lot of people thought I was an idiot. <laughs> no, you know what? It, it's really funny. I mean, I've seen people comment on a couple of, of people. I mean, I get some really fun comments. And I just tell them, thanks for commenting, because at least you were listening. Um, but that being said, you know, until you're in that spot and you're at the driver's seat and in the helm, you know, doing the thing, you know, you're an armchair warrior and you have no idea what it took to get your ass to do that. Um, I keep doing this. I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I've gone through a lot of crap with a lot of people. But um, I put it out. I wish it was a little bit more consistent, but you know what? I got a life. And I got to do what I got to do. So when I bring people on, like yourself, they're people that are important. It's information that's important, and I want people to hear it. But when you get those armchair warriors out there, they can go kiss my Irish, you know what? Um, yeah, well, you know, when you got fucking idiots like Waters out there and you and, and <laughs> paid out there, you know, it's like I had Heather Wade on my station. Yep. And, and well, yeah, I, I was supposed to have Heather Wade on my station, but half the fucking time she wasn't on the air. And then she just disappeared altogether, and nobody heard a fucking word from her for months. And by that time, I had already called it quits with her. Yeah. Because it, it's just not how you, you do shit, you know? I mean, on a business standpoint, you start drawing in people, and all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. And those people say, well, I'm going to go find something else to do. Because, you know, yep. so it's like, I got tired of the crap. And that's all, you know, I mean, I could go on for three hours about crap and I'm not going to do that because I don't want to talk about it and either nobody wants to listen to it. So. No, no, not, not a problem. I was just, you know, I'm just commenting on what, you know, the product that you put out. It was a solid product. And unfortunately, like you said, you can't depend on everybody or anybody. Um, there's very few people you could depend on. You you will come across people in your lifetime that are like, you know what, this 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 person was, you know, they were there. Um, but there's so few. I mean, it's it's like having a unicorn, finding a unicorn, very rare. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that being said, and and where we were, you know, I was mentioning earlier before about free energy and these aliens that are out there doing stuff. I mean, what's what with all this stuff about people screaming for disclosure? And I've always stated disclosure took place in 1977 when. Uh, Dr. Heineck was on uh, in the movie Closing Counters of the Third Kind, literally saying, look, aliens, we're working with them. Um, it was right there in your face. Do you think there's going to be a disclosure? Do you think aliens are going to come here? Um, you know, and do you think off-worlders are going to um, acknowledge what they are and help in that, that type of transition from us being just Earth people to being part of a galaxy or something bigger well i think the off-worlders that are here are quiet enough and just mingle because you know for one you know i, I could sit here and i can tell you how i'm an off-worlder and you know what you're gonna think i'm full of shit but if you want listen to all these things on tv it's like oh yeah i'd love to, I'd, I'd love to beat an alien but you could be talking to an alien right now and you wouldn't even realize it yep. because we're that quiet there's tons of people out there too that have a mental problem and, and they think they're an alien one or not or they want to be something that they're not and right. it, that's a whole nother show <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, I got about 10 of them in my apartment drop it <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go into that 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 end of it, um, or the the people. I mean, I got a guy in my building who, yeah, he's you know he thinks he's uh, part of something bigger, and he just needs more medication. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, um, I think there's a certain discipline that off-worlders have because of the knowledge that they have and of what they are that that play a huge role in how things are, are turning out, but. 
I don't. I just don't see an alien invasion. I don't see all this crap that that Greer has been posting. You know, and you know, Project Blue Beam and and uh, the Lee Harvey Oswald of of UFOs. Well, Tom, whatever his name is. The whole reason society has what they have is because of um, ET. I'll just put it that way. All the electron, and we'd still be stuck with tubes. You know, tubes are really good when you have an amp, and you got. Well, th- well we're going to get into a different stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and music. Yeah, yeah, tube, yeah, yeah. Tube, tube amps are fr- fucking awesome. Yes, they are. <laughs> but we wouldn't have cell phones. We wouldn't have a computer. We wouldn't have internet. We wouldn't have things work as fast as they do. Period in life and the communications and all that jazz. If it wasn't for ET, do y- y- you think it was designed purposely to be? F- come out that way because they're setting up setting the stage for us to be introduced to them officially it was self-sabotage this is what it was okay you are everyone here has the ability to do everything they do on their cell phone or their computer in their mind Yeah. Everyone. You've just been told since you were a little baby, you can't. So you don't. And if I can do it on my computer, then why do I need to do it on my mind? Right. If I'm, I mean, it, it would be labeled magic 100 years ago. Well, you, I, I mean, you're talking about... Um, I'm going to go a little bit a little weird here. Sending messages to people... Um, Drawing up information that's in other other resources that you have no physical connection to, or is it just the calculation aspect of it, the memory, the storage? It's the memory. It's the storage. It's uh, wherever really that you want to take it outside of Facebook. Yeah, fake book is just bullshit. I mean, I get to no. Say, I mean, and yeah. the. the, the that's uh, the whole point is to keep people dumbed down. Well, let's keep people playing video games instead of um, these people working with their their minds to be able to, oh, I don't know, move objects on their own just yeah. by thinking. The, you know, what about transport? Can you instantaneously transport from point A to point B? Um, if if you have the um, out, if you have the know how yeah, if the you know-how. have the know how it's totally possible if you have the know how that's pretty cool that would save a lot of money um, and a lot, <laughs> a lot on air pollution uh, to be able to go it from would. point A to point B um, but there's this almighty thing called the dollar and yeah. everybody worships it they say that they they, they worship a, a, a all knowing deity but it really, it's the almighty dollar that they, they worship. Yes. Um, everybody's at the trough of the almighty dollar and uh, doing their best to get as much of it as possible. Um, but, uh, and that's a bike that just went by. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's, I, I think, let's, let's, let's bring it back again to that cashless society. If we move away from physical cash or, or money or... Uh, some kind of payment system, and it's we we I guess we evolve. Is it an evolving, or is it just the stage set by uh, the powers that be to move into a different society like that? Wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it allow each one of us to uh, explore our abilities and open up our minds? No, it wouldn't. What it would do is in our children wouldn't. Uh, the children that would be born after it happened wouldn't know any different. But when you can't hold a garage sale without the government knowing it, and you can't get the, the, the cash for your product right. um, without having to inform the government immediately upon the transaction, because it's now in credits instead of cash and every single thing that you do you you, you can't buy anything so, without somebody knowing about it so you can't yeah i didn't mean to interrupt you go ahead 
You can't do anything without somebody knowing about it. Uh, it would make it so much easier for, uh, let's just, well, I, I, without getting into the conspiracy aspect of it, it would be so much easier for a hacker just to enter your account and you have absolutely nothing left. And there's nothing anybody's going to do about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I knew about the aspect of the... the the powers that be, the governments, whatever you want to call them, the people that really have all the, all the money, they want to know what you have and what you're doing with it. And there is no such thing as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in their eyes. Um, it's, it's a falsehood. Uh, the principles that this country were founded on uh, have been fought against by the powers that be since day one. And, yeah, no, I, I, I can appreciate the fact that if you wanted to do something, have a lemonade stand, and now the government knows that your kid sold $40 of lemonade but didn't pay taxes on it, I mean, I can see them coming after the kid and you um, for bullshit oh, yeah. purposes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, and you would know, think about the lemonade stand aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. Your, well, your child wants a lemonade stand, and she sells a lemonade for, for 10 cents a cup, and she makes $20 and, but didn't collect taxes. And, yep. and they're not going to come after your child. They're going to come after you because it's your phone. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. It, it's, you know, we're living in some pretty funky, scary times. Um, there's moments where I think... We're going to turn out bet for the better. They are very few and infrequent right right now, um, but we live in scary times, and the, I just can't I can't believe that all these people, uh, well, in this country, are going this this socialist type of mentality when they don't really realize that it's not about everybody you know getting a piece of pie, and it's not about you know we owning everything. It's about whoever is in the top 1% is still going to be the top 1%, and they're going to dictate what you have and what you don't have. And how people are so stupid and naive in this subject matter. Um, but, yeah, I, I couldn't live in a society where they knew everything you were doing. I, it would just drive me nuts. You know, I, that would be craziness. Um, but, what, what do you... What do you predict for the world? I'm just going to go throw it out there because we're getting close to that time when we've got to say goodbye. But what do you think from this point for the next year? What do you see taking place or do you just not care? You know, what is what it is and it'll be. Because, it, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, I'm trying to go, like, do you see anything good happening? Um, hope, a new direction, something. Or, or no, it's just doom and gloom, and we're going to be really in for it. Well, common sense will tell you that Pence, uh, Pence, uh, what the hell, Biden is going to be the one that runs against Trump. Right. Uh, Trump will be president again. Are you there? I'm there. I was drinking, but I don't think everybody wanted to hear me take a sip. <laughs> oh, well, sure. We want to hear you swallow. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> oh, we're going to go this route now, aren't we? Okay, tit for tat. Let's go for it. Come on, yeah. guy. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I think it's I, I really, pretty obvious about Trump being the next president. I, I, as far as what goes on, it, it, I, I haven't thought about it. I haven't asked about it. I don't care. I really don't. I've, I I have been a hermit for the last year. Yeah, yeah, you I mean, I, you uh, have. You know, uh, did you have you in in many ways enjoyed not having the requirements of you know like you know having the weekly show and you know that stuff and and enjoy having that mo those moments with the granddaughter and you, you know like a little bit more freedom technically or no you just like it was good initially and I I need to get the hell out of this house. <laughs> There are times that I miss it, and then there's times that I don't. There are more times that I don't. And, you know, I mean, sometimes there's there's stuff that, you know, oh, yeah, I would really love to do a show. Oh, that's right. I don't have a show anymore. But, you know, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. things are what they are. I got tired. Of, I don't miss all the bullshit. Yeah. So, um, and, you know. People think bullshit is uh, a guest not showing up and leaving you having to do a show. No, that's not bullshit at all. Well, it's 
you know, when you're live on air and you're live and, and, and the guest doesn't show up. No, because you either you'll call B or Al. <laughs> well, I I would call whoever I'd call yep. and you know, but that's not what it's about. That is the least of the problems. So Right. But you, you, I, I was just, you know, it's just we're, we're in really, really, it's, it gets to be a little bit unnerving, and, I, and I, I'll use the term scary at times about what's going on. I mean, the whole militant factor, and no one can talk to each other. We, we, I, I, I've said this before. I said the only way we can kind of, like, get back on some kind of track is, is if we, we, we would need a civil war. We need to, or, or an act of God event that would clear clear the side, you know, and so we could start fresh with a new generation. Because people are so entrenched in their their bullshit that we can we're not getting anything done anymore. I, you know, I, we do need a revolution. We do need a, uh, but you know what? It's not going to happen. Yeah, no. people are too into. Well, you, you already said it to too into herself. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like somebody else's problem when it comes right down to it. They don't want to be bothered. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you sit back for for just sit back for one day, stop watching the news media, stop doing whatever, and just take in all the crap that's going on, and what people are saying, and what they're believing, and you're just going to shake your hand. You're going to face palm yourself and going, "Oh my God, when did we become this freaking stupid?" When did we become this naive? When did we just get so suckered that we're divided on everything and we're getting screwed because we're divided? Um, and I'm not talking about all those people that are at all these rallies for the, I guess, the Democratic Party, you know, looking for free handout and free college and free this and free that. There's nothing for free in this world, people. Not at all. Um, <laughs> you're going to pay for everything. So if you think you're getting a free piece of pie, no, you're going to come back. It's going to come back and haunt you and bite you in the ass, that pie. You're going to be asked to do something, and uh, you may not like it. So before you ask for free shit, you know, look what, look look on the label and see what the uh, payback is. Um, you know, what you got to pay back because uh, the price is maybe very, very high for you to deal with. That's my problem. Like, you know, the, everybody's into their own bullshit, but... Um, I don't know. I, I, I just, uh, I, I'd like to be able to still like, I remember a time when it wasn't like this. We weren't as stressed. Um, we had our moments in this, in this country and alone where we'd get angry at each other. But in general, it would fade. We'd get back on track and we'd unite again for a bit. But this seems to just be ramping up and up and more and more and more and black and white and pink and blue and well, gay and not gay. You know, it's- I, re- I remember a time when uh, you called someone a communist and the government would look at them and arrest them because they were a communist. And now they're running for president. Yeah. Yep. Bolshevik Bernie and and the other Bolsheviks that are sitting up there. Um, it's But that's my whole point. You know, I think everybody's been hoodwinked. I'm not saying what we had is was perfect. It wasn't. The concept was very good. It was great. Implementation was good initially, and then it all went south. Um, but today, people just don't think. You know, you know, Bernie Sanders didn't even have a job until he was 40 years old. Yeah, and, and, and it was the current job he has now. I mean, he's done nothing productive with his life. To, he has no real experience except getting paid a lot of money to sit in, you know, the halls of, uh, the, you know, the Senate and, and, and just argue with people. I mean, I, I think anybody could do that at this point. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, you want a really good job in government, anybody that's listening, um, go run for, for federal office. Um, you'll get benefits for life. You'll live high on the hog, and you'll move from being the 98% to the 1%. It's a guarantee. That's that's how it rolls. So, what are your plans for the future? My plans. My Tigger friend, where are you bouncing again? Or are you going to be, you know, is there? Can we look forward to something? And also, if anybody has any questions for you, where can they find you? 
my plans for the future are to get on my motorcycle and ride. Amen. Hopefully we'll get a chance to meet up. That'd be nice, maybe this summer. And future getting a hold of me, you just got to get a hold of me on Facebook. I mean, <clears throat> it's the only place. And who are they looking for on Facebook? They're looking for Arizona Tramp <laughs> on Facebook. He may be because dead, it but... won't let me change my name, <laughs> so I have to use that hand, that name. Yeah, no, no, no. They they're they're pretty pretty much sticklers for that at these day the, uh, this day and age. They won't let you edit things. Can you can put the nickname in though? Can't you? Tigger, you might be able to put that. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's a nickname spot. I'm not really, you know, I I've, I've pulled all back dramatically from from fake book and and a lot of stuff. Yeah, I go on, I see if something. I don't even look if people tagged, you know, tag me, and I I don't care anymore. Um, I'm not even seeing current stuff. You know, you complained about. Oh, all the I'm time, not either. It's like, I, yeah. Yeah, Facebook sucks. I mean, I, I'll scroll through and I'll hit that the the feed so I get a new new thing, you know, and yep. it will pop up. Welcome to Facebook. Click <laughs> next to continue or oh, some man. shit. I That's... mean, so it's like, okay, well, I'm done with this for a few hours. Yep. You know, I, I just <laughs> wow. It's it's so you know it's so bad that even my my wife is just like. Uh, I don't even. She doesn't even really bother that much anymore because it's the same thing over and over again. It doesn't change. I mean, I mean, I see the same post for days, weeks, and and sometimes I get posts that are like two weeks old, and I'm first yeah. seeing them, and I'm like, what the hell is this? So, uh, you know, but that's where I am. That's where we are. We can catch catch me and and Nobu Bumi and Inside the Goblin Universe and all that. Well, other that's stuff. that's another way that they play with you. You put something up on Facebook and nobody sees it, or nobody sees it for for two or three days, and that way they can keep people from communicating unless they directly use Messenger and you know. Yeah, but even there, it's it, that's that's suspect as well. I mean, I and recently I've been getting freaking requests from people. I have no idea who the hell these people are. Yeah, um, me too. And you know what? You get the request, and the minute you get the request and you get one of those messages, hi. It's just a hi. I'm like, oh, it's one of these people. Someone stole an account. and Uh-huh. Okay. You know what? I don't want, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, like, oop, block you. <laughs> block this one. Block that one. Um, I do have a certain protocol, though, if I'm going to accept a friendship from somebody. They have to be connected to certain individuals um, that are fairly trustworthy. Um but, you know, other than that, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't go on it anymore. I think it's a waste of your time. I think people are better off just go out in the park and walk around. Walk the woods. Pick up a stick and whittle. Um, take your kids out to the park. Metal detect. Do something. Get do over. something. Yeah. Go outside and do something. Do something. Um, paint a tree. Hug a tree. <laughs> Plant a tree. Yeah. I don't know about that. Well, I, I you know... I don't know about that either. It's just my kids are. It, one of them has a, a phone, and I mean, mm-hmm. it's like surgically attached to her. And I, I just, I, I want to be my dad and break it, but I'm paying too much money for that crap. So, <laughs> so it, that's not happening. But um, we're at that magic moment in time, and I do appreciate you coming on and being part of the program. Uh, always great talking with you. But next time we're gonna get Al. We're dragging his ass out. And we'll have a round table and we'll talk about cryptids and paranormal and some good stuff. And we'll, you know, we'll do a round table on something, if that's all right with you. Oh, yeah. Well, I never did get to my other stories, but okay. That's well, fine. Well, <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, we can continue if you'd like. Um, you know, I mean, you, if you want to go, you can go. We can we continue yeah. for a little bit. Uh, I'm good. Uh, you know, the the best part about what I do and where we put it on on Podbean is I'm not beholden to a sponsor or to advertising or whatever. Um, I just uh, I'm looking at my time and where I am. I wish this was an hour earlier yeah. for me. Well, yeah, if it was an hour earlier, that would work. It's about time for me to hit the bed too. Because um, I got to get really you know <laughs> up for school. Um, 
You know, apparently you got to get these people to school that you create, um, and you got to feed them. Who told me that? Yeah, no doubt. No. <laughs> but yeah. no, seriously, I think what we should do is this: we should let's revisit this in a couple of weeks. We'll we'll see when Al's schedule uh, it opens up, and let's. I think it would be good. I, I'm going to even throw Cindy in this mix. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Well, you know what? I'll ask her. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it. Let's. Uh, I'm going to put it out there right now. I'm going to. I'm going to call her tomorrow and say, "Look, we're going to do a round table. It's, it's going to be, you know, her, Al, me, and you, and we'll see what she says." Oh, we get to talk about time travel and magic and all that, huh? Well, okay. I would like to actually, and I, I'd like to uh, touch on that um, and uh, the uses of the mind as a as a portal to um, other dimensions. <laughs> But, well, I don't know. I don't know about talking about all that. And, and, uh, so, but you, yeah, I remember. Um, and this is my, my my one of my last thoughts here. But I remember we were. Um, I was getting ready. We were listening. You know, getting set up to listen to your your next broadcast. And you were running a couple of the old shows on there, and it just blew my mind when I heard it because you were the first person that I really. I, I've th- I've kind of thought it, but I didn't think it exactly how you said it. You were talking about, and I don't know who it was, about um, uh, faster than the speed of light. Nothing's faster than the speed of light. And you said, yes, there is. Thought. And in an instant, everything just changed. That was a, that was a huge catalyst for me. Um, I was thinking something like that, but I didn't know what it was. But I was, and then it was like in a eureka moment for me. And I'm like, oh my god! And then, of course, I asked you what episode, and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Go in the archives. I didn't even know who's on the show, but um, one day I'll find those, find that that from you, and I'll listen to the entire show. Well, I think about it. Every creation myth that there ever is, the beginning of the universe started with thought. Yeah. That's okay. it's. It's a pretty intense thought in itself, you know, but uh, that blew me away. That was just a great, great, great eye-opening concept, and it went over a ton of people's heads. It does go over people's heads, but, you know, but, what can you do? Yep, and I'm looking at your avatar, and it says, I licked it, so it's mine. <laughs> I think that's what it said. It's yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, it's a little bit small tonight. But I do, I do, I thank you very much, Mr. Tigger, for being on the broadcast and being on the show. Sorry it didn't go exactly in, 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 a, in a super great direction. I thought it was very well done. Um, we'll find out <laughs> from the downloads. Um, and, uh, and, and please come back. You know, I sure we'll see. will. We'll see. You know, I don't interview very often, so no, you don't. I mean, I'm I'm actually honored, and and um, Al was Al was like, "Damn it, I'm working," and I'm like, "Come on, you, you're supposed to be on there, Al." Uh, but I didn't want to put this off because it felt that, that there was an urgency in this. Um, but we're, let's find a date when he's off, and we can really we can start early. Maybe we'll do a Facebook Live if you want. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll see how much crap he gets from. Uh, his familia but with that Mm. said I wish you a great tomorrow Um, I wish you a safe tomorrow I hope everybody washes their freaking hands and faces and stops touching everything especially kids and children let's be safe let's be conscious of each other's uh, you know as human beings and other species and I think we can make the world a better place it doesn't have to be the kumbaya. We're all wearing a freaking tunic and worshiping a head of lettuce. Um, you can still be a very big individual in yourself, but just be a little more considerate of people. Um, with that said, I bid you a fond farewell. I thank uh, Tigger for being on this program. I am Brian Bowden, Sir Brian, uh, from Nobobumi, Nobody But Me, on inside the Goblin Universe. Please check us out. I'm also, you will hear me on the Cryptic Corner on the um, the Ode, Odd to Newfoundland podcast uh, with John Mallard, who's out of his freaking gourd, but he's great. Um, and I may be doing something with our friend Cat Ward. And I believe Cat may want you to come back on. Um, so that's something you have to decide yourself. <laughs> uh-huh. But I thank you. Good night, everybody. 
Good night. Peace. See you. Bye. Hey, this is Brian Bowden. I want to extend a deep thanks to Purple Planet. You guys rock. You're listening to Double Boomy, where we explore deep inside the Goblin universe. The opinions expressed on Nobo Boomy are of that of the host and his guests. Hey everyone, I'm Kat Ward, host of Paranormal Heart, your monthly paranormal podcast. Join me the last Sunday of every month as I speak to people who share their paranormal experiences. You can follow me on Podbean, YouTube, TuneIn, iTunes, Spotify, and Paranormal Radio. There are spirits everywhere, watching, waiting, seeking that opportunity time to reveal themselves like no other. They fill our worlds with so much. Seriously? You didn't just do that. You farted on the promo? What's wrong with you? I thought you were professional. C- go away. Go- I-, I got it. I got it. Hey everybody, it's Brian Bowden, host of Nobo Boomy, where we explore deep inside the Goblin universe. We have an amazing show that covers the paranormal, conspiracies, music, art, entertainment, trending topics, and so much more. Please join us by subscribing to the show on Podbean at InsideTheGoblinUniverse.Podbean.com, on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and everywhere you find podcasts. It's an informative, fun, and overall entertaining good time, and uh, we'll keep the gas to ourselves. Why don't you burp next time? Someone give me Brian Anderson.